Welcome to the car guys and this week we've got a Lotus Elise Series 1 Heritage Edition Type 79. I'm really excited about today, it's going to be amazing. So let's have a little wander around this car. This is a very, very simple shape. So there's a couple of things to remember with Elise's and this is one of the things that people were quite annoyed about very early on. The front clamshell and the rear clamshell are single items. So if you have a little scratch or dent in it, you have to replace the entire front of the car and that is not cheap. Let's have a look at the awesome Lotus badge in black and gold. I mean, that is just amazing, isn't it? Gold vents above the radiators. So absolutely gorgeous lines on this car, sweeping round gold wheels. I mean, you can't do better than gold wheels. Although I have to say that the gold dust caps, that's probably a step too far for me. Moving round to the back of the car, the vents for the engine, gold again. But this is, this is pure joy. Come round here and let me show you this, look. We've got half a Union flag. However, Damien and I think that it probably should have been another half of the Union flag on this side, but that's been left off or scraped off. Elise in gold, Lotus in gold. I mean, the only thing it's missing really is gold exhaust pipes. That would be amazing, wouldn't it? So this is powered by the 1.8 litre Rover K series engine, which is a very widely used engine. For example, the MGF used it. Yeah. They had it in pretty much, well, most of the Rover, Rover 75. It's not a huge amount of brake horsepower, 118. Mm. And even though it's light, that sort of slightly wheezy engine only gives us a 0 to 60 of 5.8 seconds, which in 1999 was probably okay i think it was okay in 1999 i think sub six seconds to 60 is is fairly quick for that period and they reckon unless you've got us two in it yeah in which case it's severely it's probably like seven and a half isn't it? they did 5.8 with a 12 year old behind the wheel <laughs> they reckon the top speed is 150 but i'm not sure i'd want to do 150 in it so we've got aluminium chassis aluminium chassis and bonded then, Fiberglass on top. Fiberglass on top, bolted yeah. to the bolted to the different various different points. And you can see if you look down the footwell, you can see oh, yeah. the red glue marks oh, yeah. where they've uh, glued it all together. It's literally bonding. Isn't it, it literally is bonded. Yeah. So what, ladies and gentlemen, the comedy, which is Damien trying to get in and out of what can only be described as a small bathtub. Oh, 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 oh! You're right. Oh. You in? What I like about this car is when you get in it, mm. you cannot help but sound like Roger Moore. <laughs> Ooh. Right. So here we are. It's very intimate driving experience. It is, isn't it? Your your hand is literally on my knee. <laughs> you have to have to know your passenger very well. I'm going to say it's quite hard as well. It and is. I don't, and <laughs> the suspension. I mean the, the, suspension, the suspension, obviously. Obviously. So because it's the car guys, it's an open top car, so it's minus four at least, <laughs> and a bit damp. It's the middle of winter, damp roads, old tyres. We're going to be lucky to survive this, I think. Oh God, it's, it's harsh, isn't it? Really harsh. You can feel literally everything. Oh, Christ! <laughs> oh, oh. Your back. Are the tyres quite old, do we know? Quite wooden? I think they're quite wooden. I don't think there's a lot of flex in them. You are literally brushing my knee with every <laughs> gear change. <laughs> I'm very, very, very excited about today. Yeah, so I've never ever, ever been in or driven. You've never even been in one? No. Oh no. my God. Never driven a Lotus This day just gets better and better. I know. That's why I am, today I'm unusually equally as excited as you. Huh? Instantly that I got in it, it, all of those memories came flooding back from when they were brand new. So back in the mid 90s? Back in the mid 90s. I mean, from a passenger point of view, it has all the sophistication and ride comfort of a fairground dodge and ride. Yeah, we can safely say that um, supple suspension in sports cars wasn't really a thing back in the 90s. I mean, it's so simple. There's nothing in it. Literally nothing. <laughs> this is a bonded aluminium chassis. So uh, this is, is it's it? not welded, it's bonded together with glue. Oh, so that's, that's what I can smell. That's what you can smell, right? And then on top of that contraption, they then add a glass fibre body. But it's, it's definitely stripped out, isn't it? I mean, you, there's, yeah. there's literally no creature comforts in here. We've got a bit of Alcantara on the steering wheel, which yeah. I think is just 
because they had some left over. I think it's just to mop up the blood, to be honest. <laughs> what when you head That's all that is. It is a very light and delicate car. Why don't you tell the ladies and gentlemen exactly how much this thing weighs? Right, so this this car, this whole car, weighs 725 kilograms. I mean, that's not that's properly properly lightweight. In modern cars, that's how much the seats weigh. <laughs> In your Maybach, that's one seat. That's one seat. <laughs> and to put it into perspective, we weigh 168 kilograms, and that probably means that the performance is quite blunted when there's blunted. two up. Okay, is this so be, is this beanage it's now? beanage time. Ready? Here we go, viewers. So that's a pretty good shove, considering that this car only has 118 horsepower. Yeah, which today, again, I mean, that, that doesn't even power the air conditioning unit today. If you've got a supercharged Mustang, that's what it takes just to turn the supercharger. <laughs> delicate little thing, is it? Well, that's it what they is, say, really isn't it? Is. I mean, it's... It's kind of fingertips. You're letting the, you're letting it dance around in your hands. I mean, considering how tiny the car is, I mean, there's quite, there's a lot of leg room. I mean, that does, your feet are over the front of the front axle, so if we hit anything, you're basically breaking it. So I'll, I'll tuck up my knees if we, if we hit something. The steering's very Porsche-like because obviously there's no weight on the front end at all. Oh yeah, bit of action. I'm pretty sure you were touching my shaft then. <laughs> now I'm not sure that this Heritage Edition, mm. this Type 79 Heritage Edition, because we can't call it what we want to call it. Well, I don't think it had JPS stickers <laughs> on it from the factory, did it? It didn't. I think uh, car guy friend Adrian, who has lent us this beautiful piece today, has added that on. He has John Player specialed it up a bit. He has. And obviously it's in the JPS colour scheme, but they couldn't actually call it JPS because the copyright for the, for the name obviously belongs to someone else and they couldn't get authorization. Which is a shame because is really shame. we should be in the Type 79 John Player Special. Yeah, the Elise itself was launched in 1995 at the Frankfurt Motor Show, but this edition was launched in 1999. And it was actually created by an Italian dealership group who wanted something special for their customers. Right. So they built a hundred of these cars in left-hand drive, and then Lotus thought, right, we'll have a little bit of that for the right-hand drive market. Quite a bit of that action. And they planned to make 50 of the right-hand drive versions of the Type 79, but actually only ended up making 22. What, do you think that's because that it was coming towards the end of its kind of production run and everyone was like, oh, another one of those limited edition Lotuses? Yes, I would yeah. say this has all the hallmarks of being a run-out model because the Elise Mark II, the Series 2, came out just after this. Yeah. And let's face it, Lotus is famous for doing special editions yep. and I think they they thought well let's let's badge them up in, in this and to be to be fair it is a very cool oh. limited edition oh yeah oh yeah the coolest yeah I mean I'm not sure if what my pick would be whether I would pick this or whether I would pick the type 49 which was the red white and gold one red, I, white and gold. I personally think that for me might even be better than this one So pop quiz. Pop quiz, good. Where did they get the name Elise from for the Lotus Elise? Oh, that's a that's an excellent question. Yeah. And I have no idea what the answer is. It's actually named after Elisa, the daughter of Roman Artioli, the chairman of Bugatti, which owned Lotus at the time. Really? Yeah. So I think it's quite a nice little touch, really. Oh, it's a lovely little touch. I don't I know. I mean, it's a bit sucky uppy. It's a bit. It's very sucky uppy. I don't, I don't know what Elisa does now. I assume she lives in an enormous mansion somewhere. And the Elise was famously designed by Julian Thompson, who was the sort of head of design at Lotus at the time. But also less known, it was engineered by the chief engineer, who was Richard Rackham. Richard Rackham. Good old oh, Richard Rackham. That's, that's a name. That's a major it's a name, name you can he? depend on, isn't it? <laughs> Wind 
up windows. Light up windows. And Lotus being Lotus, we're talking about lovely lightweight drilled sort of handles for the windows, which do rattle a little bit. Everything about the interior of this car, even down to the, the huge hinges, which are in aluminium, it just feels properly engineered. So that's, that is one issue with this car, it's no limited slip. It hasn't? No, no. so you can't, you can't just do a donut in the middle of the road. All you'll end up doing is making yourself look like a tin. Oh. We can handbrake it though. Hey! Oh yes! When I first drove an Elise, the thing that didn't impress me was the lack of torque. See, this engine's really got no, it's got no force, you don't feel like you're being pushed up the road. Yeah. And then you look at the speedo and you go, oh crap, I'm doing 60. It's actually got a 122 pound foot of torque. Has it? Yeah, which, which is not a lot. It's 165 newton meters. I'm pretty sure that my Kenwood mixer has got more torque than that. But because of the weight, none of that really matters. The weight horsepower, the torque, doesn't matter when you're only weighing 725 kilograms plus 168. You are going to love driving this. You are going to love, love, love driving this. I, I, do you know what? I think I might because I'm obviously used to the rocket as well. Yes. Which again, very light, very darty. I'm thinking it might be very rockety. It's very rockety, very similar to that. But it only revs up to about what? Seven and a half thousand? Six. Yeah, maybe, maybe eight at a push. I think, the, I think the needle will fall off if you did eight. <laughs> okay, this is it folks. This is the first time I have ever driven a Lotus Elise. Ever. Ever. Oh, clutch is very high, isn't it? Mind the enormous ditch behind. Oh just, yeah. Just saying, you know. I know it only weighs 700 kilos, but... How big is the flywheel on this thing? I know, it's massive, isn't it? It's like a bloody wagon wheel. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Isn't straight it? away. Straight away. It's it feels magical, doesn't it? I mean it's so like instantly oh. within the first hundred feet. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the no talk. That's yeah. the no talk bit. Yeah. So really, I mean you have to kind of rev the nuts off it, don't you? It is very. It's it's in that kind of VTEC. It's not a VTEC engine because yeah. the VTEC engine came after this one, but it is in that same vein. You want to be up in the rev range to get it to go anywhere or do anything. Pedals are perfectly positioned for the old heel and toe gear changing. But how small, how thin is that accelerator pedal? Yeah, it it's is. It's tiny. Like, it's like a Kit Kat, isn't it? it? Is. I think the gear stick is, I mean, it's perfectly positioned here, isn't it? And yeah, it's a yeah. nice, even though it's quite a long one. It just falls to hand, tiny steering wheel, little tiny, tiny. little movements and it just yeah. jiggling around in your hand. See what I mean by it being yeah. Porsche like? Lotus is right, isn't it? I mean, just add lightness yeah. is a yeah. thing. It's a, it really it's a, is a thing. It's a very good idea. With a bit more horsepower, it would be a proper weapon, wouldn't it? Well, I mean, the subsequent special editions, and of course the Series 2, did bring more horsepower. It did. So, I mean, imagine what the 190 must be like. That's a limited oh, edition. Well, so, interestingly, Adrian, who owns this car, had a 190 Series 1. Right. It was absolutely fiery. The 190 in this car is just unbelievable. And then one of our other friends, Mr. Timothy Skipper, had a Series 2 190. And okay. it was actually Lotus's development mule. He had a slight problem with some cadence on a very straight bit of road. Right. Where, where it ended up not on the road anymore, oh. but in the field next to it. Oh. And then it wasn't Lotus's development mule anymore. Did that put a bit of a crimp in his day? <laughs> it did rather, yeah. Brakes are, yeah, brakes, because there's two of us, the brakes don't feel as effective <laughs> don't, as don't. when there's one of you. <laughs> it's amazing that that little tiny bit of extra weight makes yeah. such a difference. And I'm not, I mean, especially thrilled about the sound no or or really that the, the delivery of that k-series engine i mean I'm i have to say that is definitely the weak point in this car yeah that, that, the rest of this car is amazing if you could do something about that engine and i think a lot of people replace them with honda units
So what do you think? First first go. Yeah, I can I can immediately see the magic. I can beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, boop, beep, classic beep, classic nineties immobilizer. Yep. Yeah, the magic is immediate. The lightness is intoxicating. I'd like a little bit more power, but and a bit more of a nicer noise. noise. That yeah, would yeah, be good. Yeah, yeah. But control-wise, balance, lightness, grip levels, superb. It's great, isn't it? It's amazing. I mean, I can, this is just a, such a fun, fun car, and you can basically buy them for buttons now. They were 25 new, around 25 new, so they haven't massively dropped. You're not, if you go out and buy one of these cars today, you could have it for the next five years, and I bet you wouldn't lose a penny on it. It's a true enthusiast's car. Oh, isn't totally. It? And they're, oh, yeah. they're, they're very, very passionate people, the Lotus Elise bunch. I'll tell you what I'd like to try. Oh. I'd like to try the 340R. Would you? Yeah, that track monster that Harry Metcalf had. The buttons that control the side lights or the fog lights and stuff mm. are a bit Doctor Who. A bit Doctor they Who. Really, they, you sort of push yeah. them in and you're not quite sure whether they're activating anything. Any, yeah. I mean, heater controls are obviously, you know, antiques. The Elise is for people who want a caterer but want a bit more luxury and comfort. Yep. Yeah. I mean not <laughs> ironically. A lot, not a lot more luxury and comfort to be fair. I'm but I think to think, the seats are good, aren't they? The seats kind of hold you, grip you. Yeah, they're like ye yellow chamois leather. I know, which means you're not sliding on them. No, they, but it's they do. It's literally impossible wear, to slide. They don't wear that well, though. No, they don't. They they're don't. a little bit. This the driver's one is quite um, ruffled. Ruffled. Yes, it's quite worn. Is that a technical term. This is classic English sports cars for the 21st century, isn't it? It's like an old MG that's kind of been brought into the future. That classic, like shoulder to shoulder. Yep open top English countryside B road blitzing as my first introduction to lotusism it's awesome it's just great fun can you believe that you've never driven one of these and and how much fun is it yeah i mean it's it's a lot thanks for watching this episode and the fun that we've had with this lotus elise i hope you enjoyed watching damien lose his elise cherry don't forget to subscribe leave comments because we read them all find us on instagram ding the notification bell and don't forget the website and there'll be another car guys episode along next week cheers